Howdy folks, Jason here, also known as Multimedia J, and I've got a lot to talk about today, so let's try not to waste any more time than absolutely necessary. I want to talk about some stuff that's been going on with me, uh, what's going on in this channel, and what's going to go on in this channel as a result of what's going on on YouTube and the internet in general and stuff like that. So let's not waste any time here because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So, first and foremost, those of you who read my blog, you already know what this is about, and I'm going to elaborate on some things that I posted in the blog entry. Those of you who don't read my blog, I'm going to post a link to the blog entry that I'm, that I'm going to be making this vlog video based on and stuff like that. I'm going to post a uh, link to the blog entry so you folks can play some catch-up if you want. Otherwise, the folks that read the blog already know what this is about, and you're about to know, you're about to know what this is all about. So, I've made, to get straight to what matters here, I have made the hard decision to radically change what I do on YouTube and diversify my online video presence. Because of the changing climate of things on YouTube and stuff like that, I've made the hard decision that this channel, as you've come to know it over the past few years, and especially with the mess I've been through since the layoffs uh, nearly two years ago, this channel, as you've come to know it, is going to come to an end and become something else altogether. I'm still going to have this as a variety channel, but with the changing climate of things on YouTube, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this YouTube channel into a satellite of a video channel on another site, which as of right now is going to be Daily Motion. Now, Daily Motion, as we know, is YouTube is basically the YouTube wannabe competitor. It's the second largest general availability video site in the world behind only YouTube, of course. The real second largest video site in the world is Youku, according to the numbers, which is Chinese YouTube. And, one of, of course, we know that China is such a huge country that the reason why Youku is so big, of course, is probably because YouTube is banned in China. So it's Chinese only, of course, so we, we kind of have to look to Daily Motion if you want to talk about YouTube's competitors and stuff like that. So here's what's going on. Those of you who follow YouTube's changes over the past couple of years, who've been paying attention to this, and I know some of you people who are subscribed to me know about this, because I was looking through my subscriptions the other night, and I was shocked at just how many people that I'm subscribed to on here stopped making videos a couple of years ago. You know, I'm like, what, they've not posted anything since 2009, 2010, something like that? And... And I don't, with what's going on in YouTube these days, I don't blame them. There's a lot of crap that's going on, and I think YouTube is in a bit of an identity crisis right now because they are what they are because of new media. But again and again and again, they're taking too many pages from the old media playbook. And now it's really starting to become obvious. I mean, if you've been, well, let's just get straight to a very good example here. Have you... I don't want to say have you ever, but for those of you who have been following this whole YouTube thing for the past several years, as I have, um, I've been involved with, I've been watching YouTube almost since the very beginning of the site, and I've been doing video making since fall of 2006, so it's it's been fun and stuff like that, but notice, YouTube actually is doing some very old media type things. They're doing video rentals, they're doing all this other stuff, and they're actually having commercials on television. Now, I've been concerned that with the changes that YouTube is making on a more and more regular basis, I've been concerned that YouTube is, that YouTube is chain, that YouTube is, I don't know what, I've been concerned that YouTube's been having a drop in traffic, although they have been growing. What exactly they're pushing these days is a little different than what they were, they've become famous for, and I'm wondering if they might start blending a little, a little too much with their more traditional media competition. These new media companies have really been caving in all over the place lately. And Netflix is striking up deals with, uh, with cable companies now to have Netflix as an app on like a smart cable box, something like that. So the, the cord cutter competition, if I say that three times fast, so the cord cutter competition to the big pay TV services is now trying to get all mushy with the pay TV services. And then, of course, now YouTube is actually doing some traditional media type stuff. YouTube is actually doing television commercials. There was a commercial for Geek Week a while back and some other stuff. And it's just crazy, you know. I mean, here we are. YouTube is what it is because of new media 
and yet they're taking so many pages from the old media playbook and becoming a little too much like the form of entertainment that they replaced for a lot of people. So I'm concerned about YouTube's future at this point, and I'm wondering if maybe there might be some more drastic changes in the pipe as a result of this. The big thing, though, and this is what I was talking about in the blog entry that this vlog is based on, the big thing, though, that I do need to chime in on here is the copyright situation. Now, I have never received disciplinary action on my account because I respect the rights of asset rights holders. I haven't ripped music from my CDs to use as, like, some kind of background music or anything like that. I don't do, you know, I've been using royalty-free stock tracks, Creative Commons stuff, overclock remixes, and other stuff where you can use, you can use it and stuff like this. Sometimes it has to be non-commercial, which is one reason why I haven't been a big fan of monetizing my stuff on YouTube, and I haven't bothered with it, and, but here's the problem. YouTube's current copyright situation is crude and very poorly deployed. Now, most of us, most of you sitting there who've been following this crap know what I'm talking about, and you're probably like, well, duh, Jay, thank you, Captain Obvious. But it, it, it's more than just some of the copyright shenanigans that have been going on with, like, DMCA trolling and false takedowns and crap like that. There's been, there's been more going on. There's more to the picture than that. Even though I've done my absolute best to respect the rights of organizations, not rip music from my CDs, and use royalty-free stock tracks, sometimes to the tune of $35 a song, to not have copyright problems on YouTube. I've actually run, I've actually had some content ID matches. And are you ready for this? With the stock music track companies, the rights holders. Now, these rights holders are completely within their rights to do what it is that they've been doing. In the case of, like, stock music, double-dipping, and stuff like that. Here's what, here, for the, just a quick uh, catch-up for those of you who didn't read the blog entry. <clears throat> stock music double-dipping is when the, the company that owns the rights to a royalty-free stock track double-dips revenue for their clients. Basically, here's how it works. Stock tracks are sold at ridiculously expensive prices. In order to get the license and not have to pay royalties or anything like that, or get in those supposedly to not get into any kind of trouble on YouTube for using these tracks, in order to, you, know, you, you could be paying up to $50 a song these days. It's been a while since I bought a stock track. The last stock track that I purchased was only $35. Nowadays, you can pay up to like 50 bucks a song. Yeah, not exactly iTunes prices, but... The way it works nowadays is a lot of this stuff now has commercial licensing to take into account YouTube monetization and all that other stuff. But here's the problem. You pay that money for the stock track, but it content ID matches and the rights holder takes your ad revenue if you try to monetize it on YouTube anyway. So what's the point of having the professional, the professional license that allows for commercialization of the content, of content featuring the stock track, if they're just going to help themselves to the revenue? So, I mean... <laughs> It's, it's a loophole because a lot of the stuff that's been sold in the past couple of years, if you read the legalese and all that fine print that lawyers love to go gaga over, and uh, I meant the original definition of gaga, not related to Lady Gaga or anything like that, but if you read that legalese, it's very, it's actually, in many cases, it's silent on monetization. And it's more about things like not having to pay royalties and stuff along those lines. So it's a loophole in the licensing that doesn't take into account what YouTube has become over the past, like, three years or so. So it's like a Wild West situation. And there's money to be made, and companies are out there making money off it. Now, I don't have a problem with these rights holders monetizing my videos because I use their stuff. It's their stuff that's perfectly fine, and if the license doesn't say anything about me being able to claim the revenue, then so be it. You know, that's, that, them's the rules. But the problem is completely and totally YouTube. There is no difference right now between the systems related to penalization and monetization. And all a company has to do, and YouTube has a big reputation for being shoot first and ask questions later when it comes to issues related to copyright and the DMCA. I've seen incidents where people risked getting in very serious federal trouble by uh, actually abusing the copyright system to silence criticism. I mean, Total Biscuit just did a video on that, what, last week? 
about an incident he went through with an indie games publisher that actually tried to shush him using a DMCA takedown and a copyright strike. So laws be darns, if there's a system, people abuse it, and uh, it includes things like the DMCA and all that other stuff. But uh, I'm getting a little off track here. So here's the thing. All that needs to happen, because of the whole, your accuser is judge, jury, and executioner, all that needs to happen if the system screws up, and suppose you know, there's money to be made when the system screws up, because even if you're able to con, even if you're able to contest, you know, the claim and, and win with the uh, with the uh, person who's who got content ID, with the organization that got content ID matched, even if you're able to contest the claim and win, they still got that revenue while you were dealing with that. So, the shoot first, ask questions later thing is a big problem. There is nowhere near as much there is nowhere near as much emphasis on the person filing the claim proving they can make that claim versus the person whom the claim is filed against having to prove that the claim is not legitimate. So there's way too much of a bias towards the accuser. Your accuser becomes your judge, jury, and executioner, and in the case of organizations playing bureaucracy games to blow off having to respond to potential false content ID matches, bureaucratic leech sucking the money out of videos that people try to monetize. Isn't that just lovely? And this is the issue. Now, it's right in it's right in the literature. If you go through and read the YouTube articles on how this works, it's right in their stuff that the rights holder can change their mind at any time. So, and what constitutes a rights holder changing their mind? Could someone screw up in an office somewhere and people are getting banned all across YouTube because stuff that was previously monetized is now DMCA takedown noticed and the person receives copyright strikes and potentially gets banned. So that's the thing. Until YouTube distinguishes between monetization and penalization properly such that a screw up in an office somewhere doesn't get people kicked off of YouTube because someone pushed the wrong button and got a lot of people banned for copyright infringement even if they were making money off of these people's content earlier. Until this distinction is properly drawn, I anticipate that it will have a very chilling effect on how things operate on this website. It's going to chill creativity, it's going to chill hits to the site, it's going to chill what people post on here. You know, the people that don't give a darn about people's rights and the people who don't give a darn about copyright and stuff that have been uploading TV shows and hop from account to account to account connected to Gmail after Gmail after Gmail and all that other fun stuff in order to, even if they get banned, they just keep coming back. You know, the people that don't care about respecting the rights of others they're just going to keep doing their thing until the system forces them off. But the people who want to do the right thing are the ones that have to lay awake at night wondering if some corporate screw-up somewhere is going to get them banned. And if they're one of those people who's popular enough to now be making money off of YouTube and not having a day job anymore, now they have to worry about their entire livelihood being brought to an end by some corporate screw-up somewhere that gets them booted off of the website because of a technicality and screws everything up for them. Real nice. Yeah, th that'll totally encourage more interaction and creativity and user engagement and all that other stuff on YouTube. Yeah, that'll really help things out here. No, I'm, I'm not going to deal with it. In light of all of this, I have made the hard decision that this YouTube channel is now going to be a satellite of a channel that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test, I think, of some other channel. I'm thinking Daily Motion so far because they're now a viable YouTube competitor. They've developed enough over the last couple of years without making some of the same mistakes to YouTube, like over automating the copyright systems on there. The copyright system on Daily Motion still works off of statements and forms that get adjudicated rather than this mechanical thing that YouTube is doing to shunt content, content I don't want to say content creators, but shunt video makers out of the process from being able to make their statements as much as possible you know it's basically shunting the end user out and constantly constantly giving whoever can secure the not even the rights but the ability for the content ID system to match something uh, there was an incident that I was reading about earlier regarding that involved BFM digital and somebody on YouTube who went out and recorded some nature footage 
and the sound of the wind in the video got Content ID matched with a wind sound effect recording. Now, that, that's just ridiculous, I mean. And uh, these companies like to get all defensive and be like, oh, YouTube's system is so crude, but here's the thing. You, just because YouTube's system is crude is no reason to take advantage of it. If YouTube's system is crude, for image sake, these companies should not be, should not be so in, in, involved that they're trying to content ID match and protect the rights of things like sound effects recordings. I mean, how many different recordings of, like, someone slamming a door can you really have? I mean, that's the thing. Some of these are some, th these are kind of issues here. And the same thing with the stock tracks, too. I don't think I want to use any more stock tracks on anything else I post on YouTube ever again. So companies like APM and The Orchard, not, no, not The Orchard, but APM's been the biggie for me with stock, stock track double dipping. You want to make revenue, but unfortunately, as, the, these comp as companies like APM pursue revenue on YouTube, like what they've done with a few of my videos that I've since taken down, uh, <clears throat> because of content ID matches, no disciplinary action, but to not risk it, I've just gotten rid of them entirely, so that revenue is gone for them. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so in their pursuit of revenue, they're actually going to chill their revenue because when this word of this gets around or more people get more experience with it and they start avoiding it like I'm about to start doing, we're just, I'm just not going to use stock tracks anymore. I'm going to use stuff from like the YouTube audio library, um, Kevin McLeod, and we'll notify Mr. McLeod if someone tries to falsely claim the rights to his original compositions. Uh, I mean, it's a mess. It's an over-automated, way too robotic mess that's going to chill video making on this site, at least by us user-generated content people, as we're referred to these days. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're only the people of the reason why YouTube is YouTube. Ugh, too much corporate stuff. Way too much mainstream entertainment stuff these days. And So can you blame me? and anybody else who has backed off on YouTube involvement over the past couple of years. Can you blame them? I mean, YouTube has got a real mess on its hands. Now, it may not, this, this mess may not be manifesting itself by hitting their wallet as hard as it could be, but give it some time. As, this, as more and more people discover this stuff, you'll see more and more people doing what I'm doing. So, so, okay, now this video is huge. Probably the biggest vlog I've ever made. So let's just wrap things up by saying where we're going from here. I've just reinvented the wheel with a lot of the stuff from the blog entry I wrote on this. Here's what's going to happen. Here, here's how, what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is eventually every video on this um, that I currently have on this channel will most likely be removed because I'm using stock tracks for most of them. And uh, so I'll probably just eventually blank everything and relaunch this channel from scratch. Now what I'm going to do is this channel is going to become a satellite to, I think, my Daily Motion channel where I'll, where I'll upload a lot of what I currently have on this channel as what I'm going to call Multimedia J Classics. I'm going to test the waters of Daily Motion by making classic versions of some of the videos from this channel and uploading them to see how they do. And if I f go forward with this, I, what I'll do then is I will heavily restrict what I upload to YouTube. And I will have a lot less... I'll still, be, I'll still have a variety channel going here, but I'm going to have a lot less in terms of experimental stuff, like gaming video news and things like that. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not, because it's not worth taking the risk over. I mean, why should I get really, really creative when, with some of the experimental stuff I do, when some corporate technicality could potentially get me in trouble? I don't want to get in trouble, I want to do the right thing, and that's a big reason why I'm making these changes. So, it, if I go forward with this, all of this stuff is eventually going to end up over on Daily Motion, and this channel will be a satellite to that channel. So what's going to be over here? More predictable content that doesn't vary as much. So those of you people that have gotten mad at me because I've gotten a little too random, rejoice, there will be less of that. I am going to at least have, I might have some heavily modified videos to remove the stock tracks, but... Uh, you know, like some like the classic series on Daily Motion is going to be. I might do some of that here, but I'm on the fence with gaming videos because they've been a source of some of the copyright shenanigans, like what happened to Total Biscuit. I may just stop the gaming video stuff completely and just put that on Daily Motion. But I'm really, I'm really going to have to think about this and make some really tough decisions regarding anything other than the following two series. Now I can confirm there will be two series on this channel. There will be a tech series, 
Similar to B Bishop PCM, V West Life, the over the shoulder type tech videos that I know some of you folks like because they actually get a decent chunk of views compared to some of the other stuff. So there will be a tech series and there will be an audio series. Kind of like the Multimedia J Radio idea I was tossing around earlier where I combine together the radio style series with the podcast into one big thing. I'm surprised at how well the audio se the audio segments have been uploading with pictures tacked on what I've done here. In some cases, some stuff that I talk about over the mic is more popular on here than stuff I actually bust out the camera for. I'm not going to try and figure that out. <laughs> YouTube is a strange creature these days in terms of how things works and what works and what gets views and what doesn't. So I'm not going to try and figure that out. So, okay, so we're going to have a text series and an audio series. And I think I'm going to stick with that for now. As things change and maybe improve, I might reconsider some of this, but what's going to happen is I'll switch over to like Daily Motion for most of my video making, and I'll have some specific for YouTube series that take into account the current climate of YouTube and how things are and what's been going on. And that will be where we go from here. So big changes, but unfortunately my hand has been forced in this by the changes that have taken place on YouTube, and I hope I never have to do something like this ever again, quite honestly. But then again, I, I don't anticipate it, because if the chilling effect that I mentioned earlier happens, the extent that I'm, that I'm hypothesizing might happen on here, it may be the case that YouTube's dominance comes to an end by the time I'm even thinking about or rethinking some of this stuff in the first place. So, boy, was that a mouthful. But for those of you folks who have been, I guess this kind of makes up for me not being on camera for the past, what, nearly six months now? Not since the at and stuff back in the spring? A lot's been going on. I've been going through a lot of crap. Some of that's starting to look a little better for me, so that's good. But, unfortunately, just the way things are has forced me to make some real serious changes. So hopefully you folks don't get all flippin' mad at me like, Oh, forget it! Unsubscribe! I am gone forever! Rotten hell, Multimedia J! Because, you know, stuff happens, things change, life changes, and sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. So, it's definitely the end of an era. Thanks for listening to this, thanks for watching and or listening to this discussion. If some of you folks have had it playing in the background, because it's a vlog. I probably should have done a radio style of this or something. I don't know, but big changes. It's time to make them. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and thanks for stopping by.